Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about what directed angles are. Uh, directed angles basically allow geometric proofs to be more concise and especially get rid of casework. If there's a problem and you have some edge cases or different configurations where some things some angles might be equal or some angles might be supplementary it just allows um, it allows something to be stated with just one line one configuration Direct directed angles basically um, will allow us to extend the flexibility of a geometric proof and uh, I want to cover this video now not because well, I'm definitely not doing inverse of geometry for my next series. Uh, I think I have an idea of what it is, but I'll leave that a secret. But um, I'm sort of working on an upload schedule for the next school year, and I think when I cover some harder geometry, especially Olympia geometry problems, um, I'm going to be using direct and angles probably quite often, and so I just want to make this video now to sort of get that out there, because I don't think this is a very well documented topic. Uh, I will link a, a handout on directed angles, which I'm pretty much basing this video on. And so, anyway, if we have two lines uh, here, let's call them M and L, then what we'll call the directed angle, which is written, written like this, the directed angle of L and M is essentially the angle from L to M in the counterclockwise direction. So it is this angle right here. And so essentially, since we have a set direction, if, if we looked at instead the directed angle between M and L, these would not be equal in, in most cases. These would not be equal because uh, the directed angle between M and L is actually this angle. And so we see that these two are supplementary angles. And so they have the property that they always add up to 180 degrees. But that's sort of not very nice because sometimes where, when we're looking at these edge cases and we're sort of one thing could be two angles could be equal or they could be supplementary. We sort of want a nice way to state that sort of those cases are the same. And so what we can what we can do is take our angles mod 180 and basically we look at the remainder when we divide by 180 and that allows us to say if we had the angle of 150 degrees instead of 150 degrees, we could say that is equal to negative 30 degrees mod 180. So all directed angles are taken mod 180. And so in fact, we have the more general statement that if we switch the order that we're taking the angle, then we get the negative of that angle measure. And so we sort of have this, this line like two lines, but we usually see an angle, like a traditional geometric angle would be written as, say, angle AOB, where you would have AOB. So this is A, O, and B. And so we define the directed angle of AOB to be the directed angle of instead of L and M we have AO and BO AO BO and these are lines um, I know that this is segment notation but whatever and um, and so it would be this angle in the counterclockwise direction, it would be negative if AOB, the order, was clockwise. 
And so let's see a particular example where this helps us. So let's look at cyclic quadrilaterals. We know uh, the basic definition um, of cyclic quadrilateral, or at least one of the properties of cyclic quadrilaterals, is that uh, if we have A, B, X, and Y on a circle, or points on a circle, then uh, here we have that XAY, the angle XAY, is congruent to the angle XBY, but here we see that XAY and XBY are supplementary. And well, we think, okay, that's no good. But here we see that XAY and XBY are sort of the, the same orientation, right? They're, they're both, um, yeah, I think that's, that's counterclockwise order. So XAY is counterclockwise, XBY is counterclockwise, and these are equal cases, right? Here, XAY and XBY are in opposite orientations. So, in fact, the in, in directed angles, they would be negatives of each other. Um, yeah. Or no, they, they wouldn't be negatives of each other, but... Um, Basically what I'm saying is that here we have equality and here we have supplementary condition, but XBY and XAY go in opposite directions. And so since they're supplementary, we know that XAY is equal to this angle out here, but this angle, since it is 180 minus this angle, it's basically the negative of XBY or not the negative, but um, I, I guess I should just write. So here, here we have that the norm that normally the angles are equal, and if two angles are congruent, then um, they're they're directed. Well, I guess they have to be in the same orientation. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is here, here is that here x a y is congruent to at x b y and here we see that the directed angle x b y is equal to since it's in the counterclockwise or since x b y is in the clockwise direction then XBY, the directed angle, is equal to sort of 180 minus the normal XBY. Uh, or if we have a point out here on this ray, uh, then we're looking at this is angle YBC. but we know that this is also equal to the directed angle of x, a, y. So if we have two points, or yeah, so if we have two points, x and y, then a and b lie on a circle with x and y. If the directed angle is x, b, y equals the directed angle x, a, y. Um, took a while for me to sort of phrase that, but um, we sort of get the same, we get two different configurations, one where angles are equal and one where angles are supplementary for one, for one condition, that the directed angles are in fact equal. Uh, so yeah, that was a mouthful, but I'm not going to do any problems with this, I'm just sort of showing this um, for sort of documentation, and because I will definitely be using directed angles in future uh, geometric proofs, so I will uh, leave a link for the um, document that uh, this comes from, so you can read up more about it. And then there's some problems 
at the end and I'll actually link a problem um, a solution to a problem that I wrote up that uses directed angles so you can sort of see how how they would be used in an approach because I know the the problems in the document get the solutions get a little involved uh, I think the uh, the one I have linked is the one I wrote up is a little bit a little bit of an easier problem and you sort of take care of cases I don't talk about the cases in the problem but there's, there's two cases and you sort of get them for free if you use directed angles um, and, and same here so basically directed angles um, make the definition of cyclic quadrilateral much nicer than than what it is and there's a lot of problems especially on Olympiads the they'll sort of throw in trick configurations where someone's argument might go wrong but if you use direct angles you're more more likely to guarantee that that won't happen as long as you use them correctly um, I guess some other notes would be to say that using directed angles with trigonometry is a bit of a nightmare especially if you're doing sort of law of signs chasing and the inscribed angle theorem I, I believe is the name where you go from sort of like say XBY to if I drew in the center XOY we know that these are twice that that XOY would be twice of XBY but this is problematic because it doesn't make sense to take twice of an angle in mod 180 or for that matter to take half of an angle um, because mod mods will mess that up and we see that here that uh, if we take half of 75 we get or sorry half of 150 we get 75 but if we take half of negative 30 we get negative 15 and these are not congruent mod 180 and so sort of it we we define sort of directed arcs um, to deal with this case because the angle XOY is really representing sort of a, the measure of the arc XY and so we take directed arcs in some sense to be mod 360 um, because there's 360 arc uh, degrees in a, in a circle anyway I've been rambling I'm a little bit tired at the time of recording this but um yeah I just want to sh sort of show this topic and uh, I promise but starting Tuesday we'll have more videos coming out so thank you thank you and I appreciate each and every one of you your support and um, I hope you enjoy the new series thank you